Welcome to Doug Kingsmore Stadium at Clemson on a beautiful Friday afternoon for baseball. A big weekend series begins as the Tigers host Notre Dame. Hi, everybody. Fred Cunningham along with Tim Bure. Well, for the Tigers, this is their first ACC action of the season. But, Tim, Notre Dame comes in here already 2-1 and one in the league. Yeah, they got off to a great start last weekend, winning two out of three against the top 20 Wake Forest uh, team. And they've done very well on the road recently. I believe they've won five of their last seven ACC road series. Well, let's take a look at the Fighting Irish starting pitcher. And Clemson knows him, Tommy Sheehan, the left-hander. Yeah, he pitched here two years ago and was very successful went the route in a 9-2 Notre Dame victory it's the only complete game against Clemson in the last 112 games now he's not a big strikeout pitcher he only had four strikeouts in that game uh, but he's off to a good start although he had a no decision in his first in his first outing against the Demon Deacons last weekend let's take a look at the Notre Dame batting order today at the top of the order is Spencer Myers keep an eye on him he led the ACC in steals a year ago when of course the season came to an end and Nico Cavadas hit home runs in each of his first two at bats of the season Clemson defensively Elijah Henderson starting as normal but he'll be at second base today Kier Meredith gets his first start of the season in the field he'll be in left and on the hill for the Tigers Davis Sharp and he has been awesome so far Tim yeah he's been nothing but sharp so far Fred 19 strikeouts and just two walks it's very early but he's actually ahead of Chris Benson's record pace in Clemson history for strikeouts uh, per walk in a uh, in a game he comes in with a 1-0 record uh, there have been 27 outs in the nine innings that he's pitched so far this year, and 19 of those 27 have been strikeouts. You can see his numbers on the season. Again, 19-2, and two, amazing. By the way, that game two years ago when Sheehan won that one, he defeated Davis Sharp, who got the start on that date. Sharp was very good in that game, but Notre Dame was just a little bit better. So we get the game underway. The first pitch from Davis Sharp. Ground ball. This is Myers who will be sending it over to first base. Getting over there to cover it. Grice to Sharp, and very quickly there's one down. Notre Dame's uh, coach is Link Jarrett, and he uh, has kind of a pretty aggressive style. Notre Dame hitters are not going to sit back and wait for a walk. We talked to Monty Lee earlier today, and uh, you know that was the impression that he, he, uh, he got. And Notre Dame Averaged uh, almost eight runs a game last season. They had averaged seven uh, per game for the series against Wake Forest last weekend. Carter putts up the junior out of Belton, Missouri. Three for 12 in that series against Wake Forest last weekend. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. One and one. Putts actually scored what proved to be the winning run in the 10th inning. Uh, the last time these two teams met on this field, which happened to be St. Patrick's Day, 2019. One one pitch, takes it for a ball. One thing that might stand out to you right away, it caught my eye as soon as I got into the stadium, those Notre Dame batting helmets, they match their football helmets. I mean, those things really are shining bright in the sunshine today. They certainly do. Two one pitch, swing and misses it. It's two and two. Except I don't think they brought a manager with them to mix gold dust in <laughs> do with the football helmets on the Friday night before the game. Two balls, two strikes. Pops it back up. We were talking to Monty earlier today about Davis Sharp, and one of the things he mentioned is that when you see 19 strikeouts in nine total innings so far, you think this guy's going 95, 96 miles an hour. And he doesn't really do that at all. He can get it above 90, maybe 90, 91, but he's not that overpowered. No. No, he's not. He, you know, he has a lot of strikeouts, but teams will hit the ball. 235 batting average against him so far. And this year it was um, higher than that. But he's been very effective, obviously. And he's the Clemson ace. Monty calls him a deceptive pitcher to be able to get those large number of strikeouts. There's a ground ball. It's going to be fielded by Parker. Parker, the throw over. It is not in time, and the Irish have their first base run. Of a tough play as Parker had to go to his left. And I didn't quite
quite scoop it up. They will score to hit. So putts with the infield single. So there's a runner aboard with one down. That brings up the second baseman, Jared Miller. Miller off to a great start. The senior out of Marietta, Georgia. Might have some family who made the drive up Interstate 85 to be up here for the weekend. Close over at first base. Very close. Good movement, a good quick tag over there by Grice. Butts has not attempted a stolen base over those first three games, but Miller comes in. He was seven for 13 in the series against Wake Forest. Pitch is low. Miller, as you said, from Marietta, he was the 6A player of the year in the state of Georgia. <laughs> Coming out of high school. I would call that a good get for Notre Dame recruiting. Yeah, absolutely. 1 0. Takes a cut. 1 and 1. Yeah, you mentioned the batting average against Sharp so far on the season. And Monty says, you know, he's going to give up some hits, but he thinks he does a pretty good job of working out of jams that when he does get into them. The 1-1. One, one. This is outside, 2-1. and one. Of course, the whole Clemson staff has been outstanding this year. Strike out to walk 78 to 13. That's amazing in uh, six games. So they're averaging 12.54 strikeouts per nine innings. Again, they'll work over at first base. Notre Dame only attempted three steals. In the three-game series at Wake Forest, they were two for three. Good, let's go. Oh boy, Jerry. Time taken. Miller stays in the box. Two-one pitch. Good lead. Takes it for his strike. Two and two. That low in the strike zone, but he got the call. 86. Two balls, two strikes. Back. Once again, he'll work over at first base. Wouldn't be a bad time for the Tigers to turn two. They've got three double plays on the season coming into this game after their first six games. They've hit into six. Haven't been all that many opportunities because the pitchers have struck out so many That's a good point. guys. That's a great <laughs> point. He had a guy in first base. They haven't hit the ball. They've struck <laughs> out. 2-2. Two -two. Grounder. Going to go foul as it saw toward the hands of Caden Grice. So we'll stay at 2-2. Two and two. Good look at Grice. We'll be interested in seeing him at the plate. He had two mammoth home runs here. If you were with us on Tuesday night against ETSU. 436 and 419, as I remember. Your memory as sharp as always. It's 855 feet. First strikeout of the game for Davis Sharp. He gets Jared Miller swinging. Give him 20 on the season now. So with two down, here is Nico Cavadas. Four for 12 in that series against Wake Forest. As we mentioned, two home runs in his first two at bats of the season. Well, it's even closer than the yeah. first one. Notre Dame has scored in the first inning of each game so far this year. And uh, Monty trying to keep that runner off a second from getting into scoring position against arguably Notre Dame's most dangerous hitter. 
Takes for a ball. I don't think there's much question that Carter Putts is going to – he's going to look like he's played a double header by the end of this half inning. <laughs> With all that dirt on his uniform. 1-0. Takes it outside, 2-0. Vadas has hit a home run on this field. He had a home run on St. Patrick's Day two years ago in a 4-2 Notre Dame victory that clinched the series for the Fighting Irish. 2-0 pitch. Inside 3-0. It seems unfair to play Notre Dame on St. Patrick's Day. Well, you know you say that, but... Uh, Believe it or not, Notre Dame has a losing record on St. Patrick's Day in basketball. Ooh. I don't know what it is in in football. I mean, in baseball. Walks him on four pitches. Just the third walk of the season for Davis Sharp. So now there's runners at first and second with two outs. He's going to bring up the catcher, David Lamana. You can certainly see how he would be very careful to uh, Cavadas. Yeah. He's a senior out of Saddle River, New Jersey. Off to a good start on this season. As you can see, his number is 444. Shares the team lead with RBI with five. He's got a runner in scoring position, and he hits the first pitch, a grounder. It's going to go to Max Wagner. Wagner over, and the Tigers get out of the inning. Sharp gives up a hit and a walk, but no damage done. We'll go to the bottom of the first. We are scoreless. Clemson batting order as we see the Tigers up for the first time here in the bottom of the first. James Parker at the cleanup spot. His 12-game hitting streak that dated back to last season ended on Tuesday night against ETSU. Caden Grice hitting at that number eight spot. Again, the two long homers against ETSU. Notre Dame defensively, they've got four seniors in the field along with three juniors, a very experienced outfield, uh, experienced uh, defense altogether. They had an error-free series last weekend against Wake Forest. And as we mentioned, Tommy Sheehan making his third career start. And it winds up that two of those career starts were against Clemson. Yep, the senior's been uh, very effective. He's been really the number one pitcher for, uh, for Notre Dame for a while now. And uh, as we documented earlier, already has a win in this stadium two years ago. He uh, walked uh, three and struck out four uh, Tigers in that game. At, uh, Notre Dame actually won nine to two. It was closer than that. He hit a couple of home runs late to uh, put it out of reach. But, yeah. yeah, that's the only complete game against Clemson. Since 2018, Goodness. a span of 112 games. Nobody throws complete games anymore, Fred. That is for sure. <laughs> All right, Elijah Henderson will lead things off again. Elijah at second base today, the sophomore. 105 is his average. He got his first two hits of the season against ETSU on Tuesday night. Yeah, he was 0 for his first 14. Takes a strike from Sheehan. Behind quickly 0-1. Sheehan not making much time. There's a ground ball to Brannigan. Brannigan with the throw over to Cavadas. One down. Connie Lee. We, uh, we were asking him about Shin before the uh, the game today. He said he reminds him maybe a, a taller, a little bigger Matt Clark. So yeah. Clemson fans know from the Tigers staff. Brings up Dylan Brewer, the right fielder. Freshman out of Atlanta. He has started every game so far this season for the Tigers, obviously. Still batting 368. He's reached in the, each of the first six games. He didn't get a hit on Tuesday night, but he still got on base. Yeah, he's really good at getting on base. 5.52 on base average leads the uh, team. He's got nine walks to lead the team to go with uh, those seven hits. 1-1 one, one pitch. Checked up on it. 
gets the call, two and one. Really have two pitchers going today who are not exactly flamethrowers, <laughs> but they're both very smart and effective mixing up their pitches. Takes a big cut and misses to make it two and two. Now the previous pitch was a 78 mile an hour curveball. That was an 89 mile an hour fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Now time is taken. If things are going well for Sheehan, he's going to be kind of a fly ball out pitcher. Tends to work high in the strike zone. Fouled off. That makes it two and two. Sheehan is a Jersey guy. You look at the Notre Dame starters today. They got guys from seven different states. The most states represented, New Jersey huh. with three. Takes outside, we're full, it's three and two. Two from Illinois and then one from Florida, Missouri, Georgia, Indiana, and California. The three, two. Brown ball, Preisner the shortstop. Gets it over to Cavadas, and there's two away. So two down, Kier Meredith comes up. Meredith made his first start of the season against ETSU. He was a DH, so he's making his first start in the field today. The sophomore out of Winston-Salem. He was one for three and scored a run in that game against the Bucks. I remember his last time out, he up, he hit a double, didn't he? I think he did. The next to the last time up. He got ready, he got hit twice. Yeah. <laughs> Takes a called strike. Very quickly, 0 and 2. The pitch from Sheehan, ground ball. It'll go to Cavadas. He will handle it himself. It's a one, two, three inning for the Fighting Irish. We go to the second at Doug Kingsmore. We're scoreless. If you think the Fighting Irish mind playing on the road this weekend, here's your answer that they probably don't. That's a look from Frank Eck Baseball Stadium just a couple of days ago. Tim, look at that mound of snow as you see the Notre Dame non-conference action that they've seen prior to getting into ACC play. They had three games they were supposed to play in Louisiana that got called off, so they went right into that series against Wake Forest. Yeah, it's it's uh, tough for Notre Dame to practice outside <clears throat> a lot. I know there was a ton of snow up until about February 20th. That picture, though, was taken by my good friend John Finner in two days ago. Uh, he actually said it's uh, been bearable the last few days. Hadn't had a lot of snow in the last couple of days, but you can see it still is uh, going to take a while to melt all of it away. Notre Dame did practice outside in 42-degree weather on Wednesday. Jack Ziska the, is at the plate, leading things off here. The left fielder pops it up. Calling for it is Max Wagner at third, and there's one down. It's sunny in both cities today, by the way. We, we checked South Bend, Indiana right now. It's sunny. It's 42. It is 63 and sunny here at Clemson. Yeah, it's a perfect uh, perfect afternoon here. Oh, it's gorgeous. Brooks Coetzee, the right fielder, with one away. Check swing. Couldn't hold it up. 0-1. Coetzee had five RBIs in one of the games of the Wake Forest game. Series, excuse me. And uh, he's a veteran. Two years ago, he had two hits in a game against Clemson on the 16th of March. He actually grew up in South Africa. <laughs> Time is called. 
That's an unusual line to see. He's he's two for ten on the season, but he's knocked in five runs. Yeah. Strike taken one and two. Here's the pitch. Fouled it back to stay in there. Now he's not the kid for Notre Dame who uh, had a grand slam in their first winning of the season. That was Alex Braid, who's not in the lineup. His first at bat of the season. That's a nice debut. Uh, yeah. You can't do better than that. There's a drive. It's going to be right to Kier Meredith. So the liner to Meredith, and there's now two away. Certainly good to see him back out there. He's had such an injury-riddled career. I was at a game, I guess it was two years ago, when he was running after the ball. He was headed towards the line and pulled a hamstring, and he was out for a long time. Yeah. We didn't like seeing him get hit by a twit pitch twice against ETSU the other day. Man. Zach Preisner, the shortstop, takes a big cut and misses. First pitch, it's 0-1. Preisner 0 for 13 on the season coming in. There's a shot to right field, but it's going to go foul, and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, a little bit surprised that uh, he had a tough series of Wake Forest. He had 306 in the limited season last year. This was a Notre Dame team that was playing very, very well, as was Clemson when the right. season suddenly came to that sudden stop. Clemson was 14 and three, and Notre Dame was 11 and two. Pitch taken, and it evens it up. 91. A ball and two strikes. There is a liner that's going to be diving stop by Parker. Parker, the throw over, made the Caden Grice stretch for it. And what a way to finish the top of the second. A one, two, three inning with a spectacular end. We go to the bottom of the second. It's scoreless. Bottom of the second, no score. Clemson and Notre Dame. What an amazing end to the top of the second. We saw James Parker really does a great job on this one, Tim. Apparently, we've found another of eligibility for Khalil Green. <laughs> Types of plays he used to make. And guess who's leading off the inning? There's Parker at the plate. The shortstop batting fourth. Takes the first pitch for a strike. By the way, we also know that Caden Grice at 6'6 does a pretty good job doing the splits. Yeah. The 0 1. This is low and inside. Or? I was real impressed with the rate at which he got rid of the ball. Yeah. That looked like it was going to be an infield hit for the Irish, but he took it away from him to end the inning. Two balls and a strike. Good look at Parker. Fly ball, right field, pushing Coetzee back to the wall, and he brings it in just a couple of yards inside. He gave it a ride, but he's got to fight the wind just a little bit today. It's not a huge wind, but it is coming in from right field. Gone on Tuesday, I can tell you yeah. that. Yeah. Had the wind blowing out here. Coetzee kind of nonchalanted that one, but uh, made the catch. One away, Reagan Reed, the DH today, the freshman out of Anderson. Not too long of a trip up the road for him to get here. Steps in. Takes the first pitch for a ball. He had a two-run double on Tuesday night. Now three for seven on the season with four RBI. Called strike one and one. Fans didn't like it, and I can maybe see why they weren't too thrilled. 
Brewers. I think uh, Sharp got away with a low one in the first inning, so it kind of bounced it out. Yeah. Maybe that might be where the our plate umpire's strike zone might be, at least for now. There's a drive. It's going to be a base hit. Reed is aboard with a single to left. Pulled it rather nicely. Could the Tigers be on another one of these freshman runs? Because if you think back to our game on Tuesday when they had six freshmen in the lineup, it was the lower third of the order that did so well. Well, Reed is the first of four straight freshmen coming to the plate. Here's Max Wagner. And, of course, we're not counting Dylan Brewer as a freshman in eligibility, but he's played before. So I guess when we're talking freshmen, we're talking new guys. Right. Reed takes his lead. Pitches in there. Ball gets away from Lamana, and there is a diving headfirst slide by Reed, and he's in scoring position with one away. Reed was alert. Lamana just lost sight of it. Didn't roll that far back. He just couldn't find it, and Reed was ready and took off, so now he's at second. Strike called on the outside, one and two. I guess they're filibustering in the press box. I didn't hear whether it was a pass ball or pass ball. A pass ball. Yeah. One ball, one strike. Takes the called strike. It's one and two. It's the fourth pass ball in four games for Notre Dame. I mentioned they were error-free against Wake Forest, but the pass ball can certainly hurt you. High ball popped out of play. It stays at one and two. Wagner from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Takes a cut, misses, drop third strike. A throw, though, from Lamana to first for the second out of the inning. First strikeout for Sheehan. He went for one in the dirt. So it's now up to Jonathan French, the catcher. French up with two down. He was one for four. And that midweek game scored a run. Comes in with two homers and seven RBI. Seven RBI leads the Tigers, and here he is with a runner in scoring position. Fly ball. Calling for it is the third baseman, Brannigan, and he makes the catch to retire the side. Tigers got a runner aboard with a base hit, but nothing to cross. We go to the third, no score. Notre Dame coach Link Jarrett, his second season, 13-3, and a terrific start for him. Former head coach at UNC Greensboro, where his last four teams won at least 30 games there. Fighting Irish were rolling, as we mentioned, when the season stopped a year ago. They had won seven straight games. Yeah, they were doing very good. Well, offensively, they were in the top three in a number of categories in the uh, in the ACC. He doesn't have a lot of good memories, though, of coming to Clemson as a player. Uh, he played at Florida State, a great player at Florida State, started four years from 1991 to 1994. And the, the Florida State joined the ACC in 1992. That year, Bill Wilhelm had uh, Florida State's number, winning all five games of that uh, season including three here at uh, Clemson in his career. Florida State was just one in five in the uh, in Doug Kingsmore Stadium, and the Seminoles were just four and 11 
against Clemson in his career. Wow. As a player. Brannigan, a shot to Sharp, who turns around, throws it quickly, one down. Good reaction there by Davis. It's kind of both players reached that time. He reached to hit it, and Sharp reached to field it. So there's one down. That'll bring up the top of the order. Spencer Myers. He grounded out to the first baseman, first time up. If I recall, it was on the first pitch of the game. Takes that for a called strike. I mentioned that Myers, not only did he lead the ACC, he was leading the country in stolen bases. He had 15 at the time, lays down a bunt, sharp fields, throws in time, and they get him. There's two down. A couple of nice plays back to back by Davis. That was excellent reaction. Davis, of course, in his third season. Maybe if you're a little younger, you might rush that a little bit. But he made a nice play there. That brings up Carter Putz, the designated hitter. Singled the first time up, but was left stranded. Line drive, base hit, so make him two for two. That one a solid hit to right. So there's a runner aboard for Jared Miller. Miller up for the second time in the game. Second baseman struck out swinging in the first. So we'll see if they wear out his, his uniform again. I lost count of how many throws to first base we had in the first time he was up, and there he goes to work again. It was at least five. Yeah. Okay. Squared up to bunt. Called a ball, one and oh. One oh pitch. Good lead, Jared. Let's go. Just again, it's 2 and 0. Oh. It is interesting that uh, Tiger pitchers look at him as a uh, candidate to steal. He's only attempted 10 steals in 66 games in his career, this being the 67th. He is 8 for 10. So he's been successful when he does run. Two balls and a strike. Evens it up, two and two. Good heat there at 91 miles an hour. Two-two pitch with two out. Ground ball. He'll be handled by Grice. He will handle it on his own, and that will retire the side. A hit, but nothing across for Notre Dame in the third. We are still scoreless. On Tuesday against ETSU, Tim Caden Grice had himself a night. Yes, he did. He hit the first two home runs of his career. One of them went 419 feet. The other went 436 feet. You add those together, 855 feet. That's 285 yards. Not every pro in the PGA Tour averages 285 <laughs> yards. So you can interpret that how you want, but bottom line is he hit him a long way. Of course, that second one hit the wall, so he didn't get any roll. That's true. Well, I think our distances are where the ball first lands. So, yeah, if they uh, got some roll, it would have. But, yeah, of course, the other one he hit the uh, – Top of the batting cage. Right. He didn't get any roll on any of them. They would have. We had the our, our field mics were so good you could just hear the thud as it hit that wall about halfway up. He leads things off here. The number eight hitter in the bottom of the third, a scoreless game. Tommy Sheehan, the pitcher for Notre Dame. 
People talk about Mickey Mantle's 565-foot home run in Washington in the 1950s, but I think it was measured where they picked the ball up after it had stopped rolling. <laughs> so comparing apples and oranges there. A liner, and it goes off the glove of Brannigan. Grice will be aboard. He hit it hard, and it's going to be called a hit. That was a tough play. Even though it was right at him, I mean, he just smoked that. That was drilled. He had to react to it. It's not like it hit it right at him. He had to make yeah. a reaction move to get to it. So he's got five hits. Brings up Bryce Teodosio, center fielder. Out of Simpsonville, that Malden High School program. He's the Tigers' best defensive outfielder, but he also has some power. He started the first five games, had the night off on Tuesday. Takes the first pitch for a ball. One thing Bryce would certainly want to work on coming into this game, he's got 18 at-bats on the season. He's got nine strikeouts. one -oh. fly ball, center field. It forces Myers back, and this one is gone. We said he had power, and Bryce Teodosio does. That is his first home run of the season, 2 nothing Tigers. And Fred, that's actually the 14th home run of his career. He has more career home runs than any other Tiger. Had a really frustrating year last year. He only had three hits in the limited season. Now he's already got seven, including that home run to center field. You know, with that shot, once again, you didn't really have to wait for it to go over the fence. You could hear it hit out there. That's right, you could. Right off that wall, a couple of fans out there loving it. As you see, a couple of the angles, and just like that, it's 2 nothing Clemson, and we go back to the top of the order with Elijah Henderson. Strike called. Elijah grounded out to third baseman. Jack Brannigan to lead off the inning. 0-1 pitch. Lays off at 1-1. One one. Looked like for a moment that Teodosio, if it had been NASCAR, it looked like he was had a chance to take him on the outside, passing <laughs> Caden as he was it, running in front uh, yeah, of him. Yeah, I was a little bit worried he was going to pass it. Yeah. Big cut and misses. So, like, no, 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 take your time. Take your time going around. Of Clemson's last nine runs scored over two games, seven of them have been scored by the players seven, eight, and nine in the order. Inside, two and two. Yeah, they got so much production out of that. In the midweek game and... From the Tigers' standpoint, good to see it continuing here. Fly ball, left field. Ziska brings it in for the first out of the inning. Dylan Brewer now up. Grounded out to shortstop. Back in the first. Average now at 350 on the season. You know, he made that great play in the field. He's got two highlight plays already. He made that great field play to end the second. And if you go back to the opening weekend for the Tigers, he had that walk-off single in extra innings to beat Cincinnati 8-7 to close out the series. Parker. Parker, excuse me. I've got, I've got Brewer up. I was I got confused with Parker. I'm at the game. I'm watching. <laughs> Dylan Brewer, the right fielder. Excuse me. I'll save that story he's coming up, later. He's coming up shortly. Yeah, yeah. I know you're anxious for him to come up. <laughs> oh, plays off him for a strike. Hello. That's okay. You've been up since 140. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five hours of TV news, then come out here and do a ball game. I have the first error of the game is that one is 
Low, it's three and one. I'm not going to bring that up again. When Parker goes up, you already heard all of that. <laughs> Let's move the tape back a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll fix it back in the truck. Okay. <laughs> three, one. Opt it up. Catcher Lamana calls for it. Brings it down. There's two away. So with two down, here's Kier Meredith. He grounded out to the first baseman in the first. Grounder goes over the head of Cavadas that time. He can't handle it. And it's a two-out single for Kier Meredith. Second hit of the third hit of the inning, I should say, for the Tigers and fourth of the game. A big bounce. No, he first baseman had no shot at it. Bill Lambeer couldn't have jumped up and no. got that for Notre Dame. Now here's James Parker. Hey, <laughs> here's James Parker hitting at 417. A couple homers and six RBI on the season. He's a Clemson legacy. Yes, he is. His dad was a very good pitcher. 87, 88. I think he was hurt in 89 and then came back and pitched in 90. Tigers won the ACC championship in 87, 88 when he was playing. And there's Tim Parker right there. Picture of dear old dad. To the Cubs. Pretty good career for the Tigers. Liner, center field. Myers pulls it in and ends the inning. But Bryce Teodosio, with a runner aboard, hits his first home run of the season. We will go to the fourth inning at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. It is 2 0 Tigers. Clemson coach Monty Lee, season number six. Of course, he led this team in his first year with the Tigers to the ACC championship. Tigers have made the NCAA tournament in each of his four seasons. They were on their way last year when baseball and college sports came to an end during the pandemic. And the Tigers off to a pretty good start this year. Four and two coming in as... Nico Cavadas comes up. He walked in the first inning to lead off the fourth. Davis Sharp missing inside. He's now ahead of the count, 2-0. Oh. They didn't have to go far to recruit Nico. He's from Granger, Indiana. Which is All strike. Next town over from South Bend. My former boss, at Notre Dame, Roger Valdeseri lives in Granger. Doing well. The Greater Granger Metroplex? Yes. Went by to see him when we went up for the Notre Dame Clemson football game this year. 3 1. Outside, he walks for the second time. Now, the last time he walked with two outs, now he leads off the inning. So the Irish have a base runner aboard. First time they've been able to get the leadoff man aboard in the game. David Lamana, the catcher, comes up. He grounded out to the third baseman. That ended the first inning, an inning where the Irish got a couple of runners aboard, but nothing across. Called strike. Lamana went to Bergen Catholic High School in New Jersey earlier this week. Notre Dame got a commitment from a quarterback from that same high school. And that young man could possibly be Notre Dame's starting quarterback when the Irish come to Clemson in 2023. Notre Dame and Clemson do not play in the regular season next year. Notre Dame goes back to 
I mean, Clemson goes back to Notre Dame in 2022, and then Notre Dame comes here in 2023. 0-1 pitch. Inside, but he gets the call. It's 0-2. You had a fun year. You got to call two Clemson Notre Dame football games. Yeah. And a baseball game now. Yeah, baseball game. We'll watch the thrilling Notre Dame Clemson women's basketball game. Left. Yeah. Misses. Good luck to Amanda Butler and the Tigers. They are continuing in the ACC tournament. They will be taking on, I think, Georgia Tech tonight. Correct. After winning that game last night. 68 to 63, but it was really closer than that. A Clemson trailed for most of the game, but then uh, made a run at the end. Yeah, Gabby Elliott had a big night. I think she had a career high 25 in yeah, that 25. one. 25. Yeah, it was a big night for freshmen in the ACC women's tournament. One two pitch. Into the dirt, two and two. Interesting that we've talked so much about Davis Sharp and his strikeouts coming in. He's only got one in the game so far. And two walks. Yeah. He's killing his ratio. Yeah. There's a grounder. It'll be handled by Henderson. Runner moves over. The throw to Grice. There's one down, and Cavadas goes to second. Yeah, Henderson covered a lot of ground that time. Good play. So there's one away. Jack Ziska, left fielder, comes up. He pulled it out to the third baseman. But he comes up with one down and a runner in scoring position at second. Pitch taken for a strike. Top of the fourth at Clemson. Tigers up 2-0 on a Bryce Teodosio home run. A two-run shot popped up. Calling for it is Henderson behind second base. He brings it in. There's two down. So it's up to Brooks Coetzee to try to get the Fighting Irish on the board. He hit a line shot to Kier Meredith. His first trip up, oh, uh, trip to the plate. But as you can see, his average not sterling so far, but when he's had hits, he's made them count. That one inside for a ball. That was close to hitting him. Yeah. One zero pitch from Sharp. Takes a cut and misses one and one. Popped it back toward us, but over. Now make it one and two. Sharp the last couple of pitches right around that 89, 90 mile an hour mark again. That's good speed, not just blinding, but Monty says he's got that fastball that moves. Yeah. Foul tipped it back. You now we're used to seeing Davis Sharp, kind of a John Olerud candidate, can play in the field, really good hitter. But it's a little different this year now that he's the Friday starter. Yeah, you're right. It's a good point. Fouled it away. He'll stay in there. He's had two games so far when he's gone to the plate. I believe he DH both of those games. But Monty wants to be kind of selective in yeah. how he uses him. 
It's tough to do. There's only been one player in Clemson history who made all ACC at two different positions in the same year. Wow. And that would be... Grounder. Foul ball, so we have time to finish out our trivia question. A fellow named Jimmy Key. He was awfully good. He was uh, all ACC as a pitcher and a DH. He also played a lot of first base that year. But um, that was 1982. He was quite a player and went on to have a great major league career as a pitcher. One ball, two strikes, two out. Swing and a miss to end the inning. Second strike out of the game for Davis Sharp. Nothing across for Notre Dame in the fourth. Tigers up 2-0 on a Friday in Clemson. Of course, Notre Dame comes into this series, Tim, after their opening series of the season. It was at Wake Forest against a ranked Demon Deacons team, and they took two out of three. Yeah, I think Wake Forest is ranked 16th coming into that uh, series. And, uh, yeah, they've held uh, Wake Forest without a run the last 14 innings and then the first two innings here. So the streak got up to 16 before we got that two-run homer from Teodosio in the third. And uh, you noticed on that previous graphic that uh, Nevada's had two home runs in the series. It gives them 26 in his career more than any active Notre Dame player. And he's, uh, I think he's got seven more, ho he's seven home runs short of hitting the top 10 in Notre Dame history. He hit 12 two years ago, which was the most by a Notre Dame player since Trey Mancini in 2012. Bring up Trey Mancini because uh, he's back playing after having to sit out last year fighting cancer. So we're glad to see him yeah. back in the lineup for the Baltimore Orioles. You see Reagan Reed. He got the Tigers' first hit. It was a single to left. Actually, was aggressive on the base paths. Got into second with the pass ball. He couldn't come home, and that was back in the second. That one gets away, but it was ball four, and Reed is on for the second time of the game. Second time in the game, back-to-back -back innings now. The Tigers have been able to get the leadoff man aboard. There's Max Wagner, he struck out. First time up. That home run you see was his first hit of the season. As you can see, a trip to the mound for the uh, Notre Dame pitching staff to have a chat with Tommy Sheehan. And Wagner hit that home run against ETSU on Tuesday. Seems like he's having more of a discussion right now with Lamana, the catcher. Yeah. No activity yet in the Notre Dame bullpen, if you're wondering, although some of the guys are stretching a little bit. And so far has allowed two runs on four hits. He's got a strikeout and a walk. So with Reed at first, Wagner at the plate. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. one pitch. Took a cut and missed. It's quickly 0-2. Jonathan French, the catcher, is on deck. Sheen's been effective with that low pitch. He's gotten the Tigers to fish for it a few times. Yeah. I and mean, that ball hit the plate. You could see the reaction actually, by Wagner. Actually, Wagner was the one who went through it, went forward. He struck out and was thrown out 2-3 to three when he swung at the ball yeah. in the third. One ball, two strikes. Fouled it back. Gotcha. 
pretty good crowd here on a Friday night. Just a beautiful, I keep saying night, it's late afternoon. But yes. here on a Friday. Spaced out nicely. Yeah. Of course, there's a limit on the total number of fans that can be in the stands this year, about 1,280. Fly ball, but it's going to go out of the play to the right side. It'll stay at one and two. We're in for a great stretch of weather. It's going to be a great weekend here. I, I paid attention to our meteorologist today. I, I don't think there's any rain expected for the next week. Very good. Monday I'm going to Aiken to follow the Tiger golf team in the Palmetto Intercollegiate. And the dirt gets away, and... For the second time up for Reagan Reed, he takes advantage of that and gets the second. The first time it was a pass ball. That was a wild one. That was a wild one, yeah. So he got to second on a wild pitch the first time up. This time on a pass ball the first time up. This time it was a wild pitch. Nobody out, no. The Tigers have that runner at second. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Misses, and it's a full count. The trouble spot for Notre Dame might be right now, you're getting toward the lower part of the Clemson <laughs> order, and that's been the most dangerous area of the last few it ball is. games. Certainly the games we've broadcast. Yeah. 3-2, popped it up, right field, chasing after it hard is Coetzee. Tried to slide over, but that one went foul into the Clemson dugout. Bullpen, I should say. So our man uh, Sheehan, the Notre Dame pitcher, actually has a connection to Clemson. See if you can follow these three degrees of separation. So in high school, his catcher was a guy named Adam Shrek, who's now the catcher at Susquehanna. His aunt was Sarah Mall, who used to work in the Clemson football office <laughs> in, in recruiting. Here's the scary thing. Did you she, have to look any of that up? No, I know Sarah, and she called me to tell me about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he thought he had ball four. Instead, it's strike three, and there's one down. So Sarah, by the way, went on to work for the NFL and was in charge of Super Bowl halftimes. Now that's somebody that's that you somebody. would want to know. That's right. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully still wa hopefully watching us today. Man, oh, man. But I'm sure Adam's watching because he's still good friends with Tommy Sheehan. So hello to Adam. Of course, he might have a game in Susquehanna today, so maybe he's not watching. Jonathan French. He flew out to the shortstop the first time up. I know he's been dealing with a sore leg over the last few days, but Bonnie said he's feeling a lot better. So he feels a lot better about the catcher's position today. I have not heard the latest on Hackenberg. Yeah, we just know that um, he's just not going to be available for a while here, but they get, get some good news. 0-1 pitch, popped it up, out of play. Cooper Engel, who can play catcher, left field and second base. He was their best hitter in the fall. He has not been available so far, but he is available today. Now, Monty didn't think there was going to be much of a chance you would see him today unless there was just a specific hitting situation. Probably have a better chance of seeing him either Saturday or Sunday, but... That gives you a little, re little relief, a little bit of, to relax about your catcher position. No balls, two strikes. Yes, he can! Holds up on it. Makes it a ball and two strikes. Here's the check swing. Come on, Fred. 
And they appealed to first. Craig Barron said it didn't go across, so it's a ball and two strikes. Pitch the French. That one's in the dirt. Lamana stayed in front of it, but that evens things up two and two. Tigers with a good chance to add to their lead. Caden Grice is on deck. French getting settled, and then he steps back in. The pitch, takes a big cut, goes down swinging, there's two down. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Sheehan. He just blew it by him, good heat on that one. Brings up Caden Grice. Singled the first time up, and he was on board for Teodosio to hit that home run, and that's the scoring in the game so far. Grice takes that pitch inside for a ball. We've seen Grice at a home run against the lefty and got the single the last time up against the lefty. Doing that will keep you in the lineup. Okay. 1 0 pitches outside, okay. 2 and 0. Grice is a freshman from Greer, listed at 66240. Time taken again. When he had that first home run trotting, came back and took his helmet off, and we had the, the ground camera view, and he still was about a head taller than almost every other, <laughs> the rest of his teammates. He was in the middle of a, a whole pile of congratulating teammates. You could still see his face. Boy. That one's in the dirt again. Lamana stays in front of it. But it's now 3-0. and oh. Yeah, it reminded me of a, if you've ever seen any pictures on the internet of Lou Alcindor when he was playing in high school at Power Memorial and he was in a, was in a huddle with his teammates. That's kind of what it reminded <laughs> me of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fouled it off to the left side out of play. Got a pretty good crowd of kids over on that side of the hill where they occasionally pay attention to the game, mainly just for the foul balls, a lot of them. <laughs> Three balls and one strike. Reed with a lead at second. Holds off of it. Takes the walk. Now there are two Tigers aboard. Just in time for Bryce Teodosio. And the first time he came up in the third, hit his first home run of the season, a two-run shot. And you might have noticed he really went with the pitch nicely. It was a little bit outside and high, and he just went with it. Hit it to uh, center, right center. So he steps in here with two out. Runners at first and second. Makes a pitch inside. I love it. Sports information, obviously, your expertise for many years. And one of the things that Clemson features is sort of the little tidbits about the players, the little personal things. And each player has a 
something you probably didn't know about me category. As we wait for the 1-0. Takes it, ball in front. So for Bryce, the thing you might not know about him, his dog is an Instagram Southern Fried Cotton T-shirt model. <laughs> that I would not have guessed. No. You got me on that one. <laughs> Wait till we get to the one on Dylan Brewer, but we'll save that. Okay. Two zero, -oh, two out, bottom of the fourth. Fly ball, left field. This one, it looks like the ballpark will hold it, and Ziska pulls it in. Tigers got a couple of run runners aboard, but couldn't get any across. Four completed, Doug Kingsmore. It's 2 nothing, Clemson. And there you see today's umpires. Jeff Head is behind the plate. Craig Barron at first. Ryan Clark at second, and Vic Carell over at third. Good to see them. And right now, if you're a Clemson fan, you're happy to see that 2 nothing lead. You know, it shows you how times have changed over the years. I was actually the baseball SID at Notre Dame when I was a student in 1977. And we actually had most games, we had professors on campus who would call the game. Really? <laughs> Line shot, base there. hit. Zach Preisner with the base hit, and he's going to make the turn for second. Slid in unnecessary, a leadoff double for the Fighting Irish. are trying to get something going here in the fifth. Oh, he really timed that one and got around on it very nicely. Right down that third base line. So the number eight man in the order for the Fighting Irish is aboard. That brings up Jack Brannigan. Grounded out to the pitcher. Back in the third. Second straight inning that the Irish have got their leadoff man aboard, but this time they get him in prime territory. As you can see, they tried to bunt him over to move him, and Brannigan popped it up. Sharp came in and made a diving effort and pulled it in. Get a good view of it here. A nice little sliding catch. Good that he did. Brannigan might end up beating it, beat it out if he didn't catch it or feels it cleanly. So now there's one down. Still the runner at second. Top of the order. Spencer Myers takes it for a strike. Yeah, he's the guy you want to keep off the bases. He uh, actually led the nation in total steals last year with 15 in just 12 games. He's not attempted a steal yet uh, this year. He's, our reason is he hasn't hit the ball very well. He's just two for, two for 14 at the plate. That was in the dirt, but French keeps it in front of him. Myers is 0 for 2 on the day. You mentioned he led the nation in steals. He had a pretty good game in South Carolina last year. He stole six bases in one game against Presbyterian down in Clinton. That's a bunch. Yeah. I was surprised to see it wasn't a Notre Dame record. Somebody had six steals in a game in 2014. Takes a cut and misses one and two. That double by Preisner, the third hit of the game for the Fighting Irish off Davis Sharp. In case you're wondering, the Clemson record for steals in the game is five. Grounder. He's going to beat that out. Yep, he sure will. The throw over from Wagner, but not in time. So the Fighting Irish now have runners on the corners with only one out. Yep, just a little tap and uh, kind of hit it in the demilitarized zone and he was able to beat that, beat it out. So now you got first and third with last year's national leader in stolen bases on at first with one out. 
And you got Carter Putz is up, who's two for two on the day, a couple of singles. And yeah. Hit the last one hard to right field. Pitch is outside. Monty Lee has talked about how Davis Sharp has shown the ability to pitch out of tough situations like this. He's got just one strikeout so far. It'd be nice to get number two here from a Clemson standpoint. That's now a 2-0 count. Two nothing Clemson, top of the fifth. But the best chance so far for Notre Dame to get on the board. Correction, he's got two strikeouts. Pitch was inside, three and zero. This is the top of the Notre Dame order. Yeah, Monty was saying uh, when we talked to him earlier today that I think Jared is an aggressive offensive coach. Let's see if he gives him the green light. 3-0 pitch. <laughs> Takes it for a strike, 3-1. and one. It wasn't an automatic, though. It was kind of on the inside corner, so... That was the 72nd pitch for Sharp. Takes it for a ball, and now the bases are loaded with one out. Puts on base for the third time in the game. And it brings up Miller, who's 0 for 2, but he was Notre Dame's top hitter coming into the game. Meanwhile, a quick trip to the mound to have a talk with Davis Sharp. Bases are loaded now in the top of the fifth inning. One out in a game Clemson leads 2-0. As you can see, the numbers for Davis so far today, 48 strikes out of those 73 total pitches. His first two starts, he had Four complete innings and five complete innings. He's working here with one out in the fifth. There's a good look at Jared Miller, the second baseman. So as you can see, it's Irish runners on base. Preisner, Myers, and Putts. Fouled it out of play, 0-1. Kind of clouded up a little bit here, and those those helmets still look like they're in bright sunshine. <laughs> <Notre Dame. laughs> you might be able to read to those things after dark. <laughs> they're all personal golden domes. One one pitch. Takes the pitch inside, two and one. Nico Cavadas, the first baseman's on deck, the cleanup hitter. Here comes the 2 1. Takes inside. 3 and 1. Now you get to a tough spot because you got the bases loaded. Yep, control has not been an issue for Sharp so far this year and really over his career. Just two walks in the first nine innings coming in. That one is a walk. 
That's going to bring Notre Dame's first run across the plate, and it's 2-1. Preisner comes in, cuts the lead in half. And it brings up their top home run hitter. He had seven home runs last year. And he's got two this year that he hit up in Wake Forest. Same situation. Bases loaded, one out. Fly ball, left field. Meredith has it. Runner coming home. Throw will be cut off, and we're tied at two. Well, Notre Dame manufactured a run there. They did have two hits, but one of them was an infield hit. It really only had the one solid hit. Yeah. Preisner to start the inning. Yeah, he smoked that double right down the third base line. So here's the catcher, David Lamana. The other runners did not advance, so we're still first and second. There are two outs now. I can see uh, he's had grounded out twice in the game. Once to third and once to second. Pitch misses. Pitch misses. Lamana's a veteran player, freshman in 2018. Hit a walk-off home run against Purdue in 2018, back in February that year. No Notre Dame players had a walk-off home run since. Misses again, it's 3-0. and Davis Sharp, as we've mentioned, came into the game with only two walks on the season. He's got four today, and it's a 3-0 count now to Lamana. That one's right down the middle for a strike, three and one. Three one pitch. Another walk. Base is loaded again. It's his third walk of the inning. And the pitch count is up to 82. 33 balls and 49 strikes. So with the bases loaded again, although there are two out now, here comes Jack Ziska. And they're going to have a pinch hitter now. Daniel Jung, a senior, steps in. Fly ball, right field going over for it is Brewer. Brewer pulls it in in foul territory, and that will end the top of the fifth. But Notre Dame gets two runs across, and they tie this game as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Your starting pitchers so far, we talked about this kind of rematch between the T's two starters, Tommy Sheehan and Davis Sharp. They faced each other two years ago. Sheehan won that battle. You can see what they're doing today. Probably the biggest difference right now, Tim, five walks for Davis Sharp, three in the last inning, and the Fighting Irish got a couple of runs on the board. Yeah, very uh, unusual for, for uh, Sharp. In the uh, walk column, he, as we said, he had just two uh, in the first two appearances this year. He walked only four batters, all of 2020. So he's just walked six guys in his last six appearances, and he's got five today. And in fact, as I look at his career numbers, this is the most walks he's ever had in a game. Elijah Henderson will lead things off as the Tigers' top of the order comes up here in a tie game in the fifth. Sheehan's first pitch, taken for a ball. Elijah 0 for 2 on the day. Sheehan at 70 pitches here, starting this inning. That one gets away, actually, they're gonna say hit by a batter. 
He's going to take his base. Hit him in the foot. Yeah. So the leadoff man aboard. See where he got him. So that brings up Dylan Brewer. Alex Brait is the new left fielder after the Irish pinch hit for Jack Ziska in the last half inning. So a quick meeting at the mound. The lines of this game are the same. Each team with two runs on four hits and no errors. I think one thing Notre Dame will be regretting, though, is seven left on base so far in the Notre Dame bullpen, Bryson Hammer, the freshman left-hander, beginning to warm up. Pitch was inside. It gets away, and you can see Elijah Henderson makes his way to second. Take another look. Wild pitch is the score. So a couple wild pitches and a pass ball, and Clemson now has a runner in scoring position with nobody out. One ball, no strikes. So I promised another one of those sports information department little things you might not have known about a player. Yes. And Dylan Brewer might have the best out of the Tiger team that I saw. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. Takes a cut and misses 1-1. One one. Dylan Brewer under things you might not know about me. Almost trampled by a herd of elephants in Kenya. I would like to hear that story someday. Yeah. Wow. As we look at him, he must. Uh, <laughs> I guess he almost is might be the key word out of that sentence. <laughs> he looks good. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like it was. <laughs> it looks like he got over it just fine. I wonder how old he was. I wonder myself. Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah. I want to hear that story before the end of the season. Two balls and a strike to Brewer. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth. Tigers have a runner at second. Out and off, two and two. Kier Meredith is on deck. Teams play here tomorrow at 3 o'clock. So if you're a Clemson sports fan, you got Clemson Pittsburgh basketball at 12. Baseball game against Notre Dame at 3. But I believe both events are sold out. I know the basketball game is sold out. Right. I inquired about that. Here's our broadcast schedule, by the way. It's a busy weekend here. It includes number one ranked men's soccer team in action on Sunday evening against Syracuse. So watch all the action, baseball and soccer, here on ACC Network Extra. Yeah, the Clemson men are one and the Clemson women are seven. There's another look at it again. One o'clock Sunday baseball game. It's a full count to Dylan Brewer. There's a line shot center field. They will send the runner. Henderson coming for home and the Tigers go back in front. It's 3-2 on an RBI single by Dylan Brewer. The Tigers finally took advantage of a, advantage of a wild pitch or a pass ball to get Henderson to second. And a lot allowed him to score on the Solid single by Dylan Brewer.
There was no hesitation over by the third base coach to send him home. I wondered for a moment because it looked like that ball just kind of died a little bit. But Myers could not get to it, certainly in time to make the play to the home plate. And just like that, the Tigers go back in front. And still batting here with nobody out and Kier Meredith up. Brewer is at first. You see Kier on the day. Ripped the, he actually had, the, he had that, uh, that single that uh, bounced over the head of the first baseman. Yes. Cavadas, so that was hop. back in the third. Lays down a bunt. Perfectly done. Even better as he is able to make it, beats it out safe. As Notre Dame tried to flip it over to Cavadas. Yeah, Miller actually made a heck of a play yeah. for Notre Dame with the uh, with the flip. But he uh, couldn't get much on it when you throw it out of the glove. Yeah. Kier is going to yep. eat it out barely. Yeah. Great camera work by our guys. There. Um, we might to go ahead and have so another look, go at look at this. Look at it, but as we saw it, it looked like he made it. It was close, but they're going to go in and take a look at it, and you're going to see it along with them. Jeff Head is our head umpire. Here's that play. This is a new angle. And again, we're, we're holding it, so be patient with us because the umpires are going to want to get to their spot to be able to see it. This is a close play, but it looked like to us on the first angle that he made it by about a foot. Yeah. Yeah. Not by much. Yeah, the other angle it looked like it was about a foot. Yeah. Here's that first angle we showed you. Foot touches the play. Man, it, it is Boy, just it, outside really his glove. Really close. I said a foot. That's more like a couple inches. Yeah. It's a smart replay to, to take a look at this. They didn't look at it long. And he's called safe by Jeff Head. So uh, give great credit, by the way, to Craig Barron for getting that one right because there's bang-bang plays and then there's bang-bang plays. Yeah. Now first and second and nobody out for James Parker. And Notre Dame is going to make a pitching change as Tommy Sheehan's day is going to come to an end. Tigers up and have a chance for a big inning here with two aboard in the fifth and nobody out. We will meet our new Notre Dame pitcher when we come back. It's 3-2 Clemson, bottom of five. The new Notre Dame pitcher is a right-hander, a sophomore, number 55, Dominic Cancellari, out of Wayne, New Jersey. It's his first appearance of the season. He's going to take his warm-up tosses, and he comes in, Tim, in a pretty tough spot. Tigers have runners at first and second with nobody out. He pitched in uh, four games last year. It was 1-0 with a 1.93 ERA, and opponents hit just 0.77 against him. Pretty good numbers right there. And, of course, keep in mind, Notre Dame has only played three games coming into this one, the three games they played up at Winston-Salem, taking two out of three against Wake Forest. Comes in for Tommy Sheehan, who went four-plus. Up six hits, three runs so far. All of them earned two walks, three strikeouts, a wild pitch, and a hit batter. So here's James Parker, 0 for 2 on the day, a couple fly ball outs. First pitch by Cancellari in for a strike. So the Tigers' opening lineup had three left-handed batters and six right-handed batters. We now have a right-handed pitcher replacing the left-handed pitcher. Oh, one pitch. Takes a cut and misses. 
And it is quickly 0 and 2. 78 mile an hour curveball. Cancellari trying to keep the fighting Irish within range. 0 2 pitch. Way outside. Lamana hauls it in, one and two. Brewer is at second, Meredith at first. One two pitch. Fly ball, but it goes off to the foul off the right side. There's a look at Brewer. Both guys have mittens on, yep. one hand. That must be the, is that the hand they reach for the base with? is high, two and two. So after throwing a couple of strikes, back-to-back -back balls were all even up. Well, they used to watch Joe Garagiola on the game of the week. He always said, two and two. That's the pitch he wants to make it happen. We'll see if Parker can make it happen here in a moment as he steps out, gets right back in. There's a line drive. It's going to drop for a base hit. They will send the runner home, and the Tigers go up 4-2. RBI single for James Parker. Well, that was a great at bat for James Parker. As you said, he got behind and then got the count even at 2-2 two and two and went with the pitch very nicely. Gotta love to see a number four hitter who uh, will go with the pitch. Brewer comes home. And so once again, it's the same situation. Runners at first and second for Clemson, and there's still nobody out. Brings up Reagan Reed. He's had a pretty good day. He's reached twice. A single in the second. He walked in the fourth and was able to advance to second in both innings, once on a pass ball and once on a wild pitch. Meredith taking a nice lead off at second. And again, Parker's at first. Lays down a bunt. There's no play at third. They will make the throw to first, first out of the inning, but now the Tigers have advanced the runners to second and third. Reagan Reed does his job. Perfect square around, and good he got the big bounce, added some height to it. The sacrifice bunt. Can't do it any better than that. No. So here's Max Wagner, the third baseman. He's 0 for 2 on the day with a couple of strikeouts, but what a great opportunity here with runners at second and third, and there's only one out. It's the third sacrifice bunt of the year by the Tigers. Infield charging in, fly ball, left field. That drives the left fielder back to the fence. He drives up, it is gone. Max Wagner, his second home run of the week. This is a three run shot and Clemson has five in the inning. It's seven to two. Well, as Fred and I look out at the flags, they're kind of dead on that one and seemed like it carried a little bit, but he really got it up in the uh, up in the air, and it just kept going. It looked for a moment like Bate was going to have a play on it. Yeah, just beyond his grasp. His first hit of his the season was a home run, and now a big shot in a big situation. Seven-two, Clemson. 
five run inning. That closes the book on Sheehan, who's going to end up giving up five runs, all earned. Jonathan French now up. He's 0 for 2 with the bases empty and one down. Flew out to third, struck out swinging the last time up. Pitch taken for a ball, 1 and 0. Yeah, just not much wind out there at all right now. One-zero pitch, takes a strike. One and one. Tigers with five runs in this inning. Back in 2018 in the ACC tournament, Clemson scored 17 runs in the fourth inning against Notre Dame. The third most runs in a game in an inning in Clemson history. Second most away from Kingsmore Stadium. I think it would be fascinating to see it. I don't think it would be that much fun to, after a while. <laughs> How long did that inning take well, a month? <laughs> it, it, uh, it took a long time, but a uh, amazing thing happened in that inning. Swung on and missed. So for years and years, I uh, had kept track of Clemson guys who had hit two home runs in the same game and whether they hit one left-handed or right-handed and right-handed. So I did all the research, and it had never happened. So Logan Davidson comes to Clemson, and he's a great switch hitter. And uh, I'm thinking, well, this kid's got a shot to do it. So I gave Brian, you know, that stat, Brian Hennessy. And so in this game, not only did he do it in the same game, he did it in the same inning. That's He insane. had one left-handed and right-handed in the same inning. Speaking of home runs, here's a guy who can do it, Caden Grice. Runner aboard, one out. Little boy. Pitches in the dirt. Rice with a single in the third, walked in the fourth. Tigers with four hits in the inning. There's still only one out. Strike called, one and one. Ken Solari's got some heat. He's been over 90 miles on a lot of the pitches. Takes a cut and misses, it's one and two. By the way, make sure you stick around with us at the end of this inning during our break. You're gonna get a chance to hear from Jared Broughton, the, one of the Tiger assistant coaches. He's gonna take you through the art of base running. Got a boy. Pitch in the dirt as Lamana stays in front of it. Two and two to Grice. See the ball up. Clemson has now doubled up Notre Dame in hits, eight to four. Monty feels he's got to keep scoring runs because this is a Notre Dame team that has a wild one. It's a, it's a Notre Dame team that averaged uh, almost eight runs a game last year. They scored at least eight runs in 10 of their 13 games last year, and they scored uh, almost eight runs a game in the opening series against Wake Forest. So still a long way to go in this game. So that wild pitch gets Jonathan French to second. So now he's got a chance to score. And it's a 3-2 count to Grice. There's a drive, right field. Good bye by a mile. A two-run shot, Caden Grice. It's a seven-run inning and counting for the Tigers. It's 9-2. That home run went probably 10 feet over the sea in the Cajun Cafe sign. Wow. He crushed it. 
third home run of the week. Well, as I said in the game Tuesday, he now needs only 56 home runs to tie the <laughs> career record. It's kind of like a special countdown we can yeah. have with a forum. Mm -hmm. Second home run of the inning for the Tigers. Third of the game. And the third home run came from this guy, Bryce Teodosio, the center fielder, pops it back. Bryce hit that two-run shot in the third for the first runs of the game. Popped his batting average up to 350. He hit a towering fly ball out to left field his last time up in the fourth. You can see right now that having some trouble out there for the Fighting Irish is Cancellari struggling a little bit and kind of lost his balance there. As you can see, activity in the Notre Dame bullpen. That's Adrian Terrell, a junior left-hander who's starting to warm up. But the Tigers have blown this one open after Notre Dame tied it in the top of the inning. Took another cut at it, but it fouls it out of play. It's one and two. Not surprisingly, the Clemson will bat around in the inning. Henderson, he's at, on deck. Pitch misses. Hey, hey, can you get pitch to him? See the ball up. Diodosio stepping in. Two balls and two strikes. Pitch misses. It's a full count. Our Johnny on the spot, producer Sanders, has just uh, reminded us the second straight game. Glimpson's had a home run from the eighth and ninth players in the order. And as, as I said on Tuesday, I could make Brian Hennessy's head explode by having him research the last time that's happened. <laughs> it's the second game that the, the bottom third of the order has been awfully strong. And if you stretched up to four, you got Wagner just hit that three-run shot earlier in the inning. Yeah. So that's six RBIs and um, three home runs. From Rice and French have also reached each on on walks. Cancellari's full count pitch. Popped it up out of play, does Teodosio, so he'll stay in there. Notre Dame got themselves back in the game with two runs in the top of the fifth to tie it. That 2 2, think they're feeling pretty good about themselves, and the Clemson offense has pounded the ball here in the bottom of the inning. Seven runs and still batting. Pitches inside for a ball. Another base runner for Clemson. And we go to the top of the order with Elijah Henderson, who started all of this. He got hit by a pitch and advanced to second on a wild pitch. And another pitching change for the Fighting Irish. They will bring in a new pitcher, and we'll talk about him when we return to Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Aiden, Aiden Tyrell, a junior left-hander, is the new pitcher for Notre Dame, their third of the game. He is a junior out of Joliet, Illinois. The home of Rudy Rudier. Who has some notoriety in his life, as I recall. <laughs> it's his second appearance of the season. He threw a couple of scoreless innings and got a save in one of those two games on Sunday against Wake Forest. Presumably the first one since they won the second one, 10 nothing. Yeah. Strikeout and a walk in that game. No hits or runs allowed. He comes in with the Tigers with Bryce Teodosio at first. Still only one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Clemson has put seven runs on the board. Yeah. 
Elijah Henderson up. He's reached once. As we mentioned, he got hit by a pitch in the earlier in the inning as the Tigers have now batting it around. Takes a swing, misses, 0-1. Tigers have nine runs on nine hits. Quick snap throw to first as Teodosio gets back. For the curious, Bryce is one for one on the season in the stolen base category. The pitch takes it for a ball. Two and one. Henderson, officially a sophomore from Greer at first. Here's Teodosio. Takes a cut and misses two and two. Game hits the two hour mark here in the east. Southeast as that pitch found out of play, so we'll stay even at two and two. Been a long time in the dugout for Sharp. I wonder if Bonnie might bring somebody else in as we go to the sixth. I don't know. He's thrown what? What would he say? 83 pitches? Something, something yeah. Runner. Runner going. Teodosio is in after the strikeout. It's called safe. Why is everybody walking off the field only for Notre Dame? There's only two out. Two outs. <laughs> he got about half the Notre Dame team, unless they call him out at second after that. Kind of a delayed call on that stolen base attempt. Was the uh, batter's interference? Yeah. They may have called interference. We'll figure out in a moment, but the Tigers get seven on the board. They go to the six. That's 9-2. Five innings complete here at Clemson. Davis Sharp is in the game after taking an extensive break as the Tigers scored seven runs in the bottom of the fifth. Let's show you how that inning ended because it was a little bit confusing. Elijah Henderson strikes out swinging. He's called for interference as he leans in and they call Bryce Teodosio out at second. Trying to steal, that's that's the call, but. Well, I know here's what I think. I think, I think he interfered with the catcher's ability to throw him out. So yeah. it goes down as a caught stealing. Right. So even if he wasn't caught stealing, it goes down as a caught yeah. stealing because of the batter's interference. So, yeah, that's one of the situations where you can have two outs on one batter interference. It'd be the most unusual double play of the Notre Dame. Season, right. I believe. <laughs> Brooks Coetzee leading things off for Notre Dame here. A grounder to Grice. Grice will flip over to Sharp, and there's one down. It was a good inning for Clemson at the bat. The Tigers had seven runs, five hits. So they had a sacrifice bunt and a caught stealing, which don't count as out. So, so in terms of at-bats, Clemson was five for six. The Tigers hit 833 that inning. Man. A couple of home runs. I think that Caden Grice home run finally came down. Stretching out and can't get it as Teodosio. Here's Preisner on his way to second. That is his second double of this game. He had that double that he hit sharply to lead off the fifth. And now he gets a one-out double here. 
Great attempt by Teodosio, who probably has more diving catches like that than of any active Clemson player, but it couldn't quite catch up to that one. And Preisner, as you said, has his second double. You almost expect him to hit <laughs> to catch those. Yeah. So Preisner in at second, and here is Jack Brannigan, the third baseman. Call for a strike. Brannigan has been basically in the infield so far. He grounded out to the pitcher, and then you might recall in the fifth, he tried to bunt a couple of runners over, and he popped it up, and Sharp came in and made that diving catch. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Brannigan is a third-generation Golden Domer. His father and grandfather both attended Notre Dame. In fact, his grandfather played on the Notre Dame baseball freshman team with a guy named Carl Yastrzemski. There is a line shot over the head of Henderson at second. And the Fighting Irish now have something going. They got runners at the corners with one out. Back to back base hits and it's gonna bring up the top of the order. Yeah, went the opposite way nicely. Sharp has now allowed six hits in the game. Spencer Myers singled the last time up in the fifth. Takes the pitch for a ball, 1-0. Myers got his average up to 200 with that base hit in his last trip to the plate. Fouls that one out of plate towards the Clemson dugout. It's one and one. Yeah, he came in at 167. He was their top hitter last year. In fact, he was third in the ACC in batting last year in the limited season. He had 431. Working the... Runner at first. Brannigan has not attempted a stolen base so far in the season. 1-1 one, one pitch, but first another throw over to Grice. Round ball, Grice will field it. He'll take it himself. It's good enough to bring the run in. As you can see, coming across the plate to score is Preisner, and it's now 9-3. Brannigan moves to second. Two out now. Anxiety five pitches, by the way, for Davis Sharp. With two out here in the sixth. Yeah, you would think this would be his last inning this yeah. early in the season. Putz is at the plate. He's reached all three times today. A couple of singles and a walk. The 1-0 pitch. We were talking to Monty Lee earlier today about Sharp and how he might use him on days where he's not the Friday starter. And he talked about it. It will really depend on how he feels and how sore he is after a pitching outing. And he's going to be right at 100 pitches. So I don't really know if we'll see him Saturday or Sunday. Which is inside 2 0. Oh. Correction 3 0. Oh. Still throwing pretty good speed. That was near 90. Pitch taken for his a fourth ball and. Still haven't gotten putts out. Yeah, 
He's reached all four times. Not that bad a pitch. So now runners at first and second, still two out. Jared Miller walked to bring in a run home in the fifth. Six walks now for Davis Sharp, just two strikeouts. He had six walks in the last two years coming in. And got six walks today. <laughs> he has just the two strikeouts. Yeah. Jonathan French coming out to have a quick word with him. You know, we talked to Monty earlier. He did say Notre Dame is a really good team at putting the bat on the ball. They don't strike out very much. And after a little delay, another trip to the mound coming. He's at 99 pitches, and that is going to be it. So the Tigers will make a pitching change. We will meet the new Tiger reliever when we come back. Clemson up. It's 9-3 as Davis Sharp gets a good ovation on a Friday. New pitcher for the Tigers is Ryan Ammons, redshirt freshman left-hander. He's from Easley, went to Wren High School, and he's making his second appearance of the season. And he replaces David Sharp, who started the game with five and two-thirds, faced 29 batters, uh, gave up six hits, three runs. All of them earned six walks and two strikeouts. You know, it might not be his necessarily his best outing of the season, as the way baseball is, but he so much run support today. Yeah. There'll be other times where he might just be sterling and might not get any offensive right. help. Yeah. So as a new coach, pitcher. As Coach Wilhelm used to tell me, well, Tim, that's baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear him saying that. I yes. absolutely can. So that brings up Jared Miller. Runners at first and second with two out. Fly ball, right field, giving chase for it. Back to the fence, and it goes out. One pitch, and it's a three-run shot, and we got a ball game again. Home run, Jared Miller, and Notre Dame draws back within three. It's 9-6. I told you, Notre Dame averages about seven or eight runs a game, so the Tigers need to keep scoring. And that was a shot to the opposite field. Really well struck by Miller, who came into this game as Notre Dame's top hitter. He was hitting 538 coming in. He was 0 for 2 of the walk before that. He's now knocked in four yeah. of the runs for the Irish. He really went with the pitch nicely. And now you got Nico Cavadas up. He's got power. He's their best home run hitter. He's got 26 career home runs. He's got two walks and a sacrifice fly so far. This is on the pitch, 2-0. and oh. When we got here, we didn't think we'd see four home runs in the game. Three by Clemson, that's the first one by Notre Dame. But, um, the wind was blowing out, when they, blowing in when the game started, but now it actually looks like it's blowing a little I bit towards the right. Big swing right there and a miss by Cavadas. Two balls and a strike. There's two out. Hammond's pitch taken for a ball. It's three and one. It was a 2-0 Clemson lead after four, and we've seen 13 runs scored yeah. in the last inning and a half. Inning and two-thirds, I should say. Liner, it's going to be a base hit. Extra base chance. Maybe with a little quicker player than there, perhaps. Just a good solid single. Yeah, and Brewer did a good job of getting over there and picking it up. Fourth hit of the inning for the Fighting Irish. Yeah, they've doubled their hit total. They had only four hits in the first five innings. 
Lamana, the catcher, is up. He walked the last time. Pitch is taken for a ball. Low curve at 72 miles an hour. Ammons pitch. Missed high, 2-0. Oh. Lamana batting 364. Knocked in five runs on the season. Misses a pitch, is now 3 0. See what it'll do here on 3 0. Taking it. Walks on four pitches. What if I had told you <laughs> at the start of this inning? The tying run would be walking up to the plate. Uh, yeah. It was 9-2. to two. Clemson sailing along with Sharp. Got the first out of the inning easily. And I think we're going to have another change. Alex Braid is coming up. And we are going to have another Clemson pitcher coming in. Second reliever of the inning makes his way out. We will check out the new Clemson pitcher when we come back. Notre Dame still batting. It's 9-6 Tigers. We're in the sixth. New pitcher for the Tigers, the right-hander Nick Clayton out of York. Tim, this is the second time we've seen him this week. He got the win in relief against East Tennessee State on Tuesday night. He got five strikeouts and two and a third. Yeah, he looked, uh, looked pretty sharp. He um, faced nine batters, gave up four hits, struck out five, didn't walk anybody, just said. And um, Bonnie hoping he could be very effective here, get the last out of this inning. As uh, Notre Dame, even after the home run, we got the next two batters on base. Runners at first and second for the Irish. And Alex Brait, graduate student from Vieira, Florida. He's a guy who hit a grand slam in his first time up in the first inning of uh, the second game of a doubleheader last Saturday against Wake Forest. And Notre Dame ended up winning five to four, so. Knocked in five on the season. He's taken over in left field for Ziska. Takes a big cut, misses 0-2. So Clayton's got a chance to end this inning, top half of the inning. Crowd trying to get him to Get one more strike out of this. Clayton, the strikeout to end the inning. But the Fighting Irish put four on the board to get back into it. We go to the bottom of the six. Clemson up 9-6. Nine six Clemson leading Notre Dame. Here's how the Tigers put their offense on the board. Bottom of the third, Bryce Teodosio with a two run shot to make it two nothing Clemson. Go to the bottom of the fifth inning, a big inning. Ryan Brewer with a single to bring home Henderson. Then it was Jason Parker with a single to right center. Followed by Wagner's home run, a three run shot to left field as Clemson put seven on the board. Caden Grice with a home run to right field. That made it a nine to two game at one point. 
but Notre Dame responded with four in the top of the six, so it's still it's college baseball. So it's nine to six right now. The Tigers have the lead, but the Fighting Irish have fought their way back into it. Tigers will lead things off here. This is Brewer leading things off. The number two hitter in the order. Had that RBI single in the fifth. Another pitch taken. Tyrell on in relief. He's the third pitcher of the game for the Fighting Irish. Clemson batting around in that last inning. Brewer takes a called strike, one and two. Brewer on the day, one for three. He scored a run as well as knocking one in. That one's in the dirt, two and two. Both teams have batted around there. Each of their last two at bats. Yeah. Each of their last at bat. That's why you never know. Sometimes you think with Friday night starters, you think it's going to be a you know a low scoring type pitchers duel. That's what we were anticipating, and you just never know. Grounder foul to Cavadas. It'll stay two and two. Hudson, nine runs on nine hits. Six runs on eight hits for the Fighting Irish. Check swing, but he can't strike out, and it's the first out of the inning. That is the fourth strike, fifth strikeout for Notre Dame pitching. And the second for Tyrell, who's faced two batters and struck them both out. So with one down, here's Kier Meredith. Singles in each of his last two trips to the plate. Meredith. Early in his season now, up to 500. Yeah, certainly good to get him back. Hit 364, I believe it was last year. Good look at Terrell. Left-hander delivers. Inside for ball number two, two and zero. Strike called, two and one. Early evening now, temperatures still in upper 50s. Strike call, two and two. Our home plate umpires like that low strike today, but he's called it both ways. He has. Two two pitch. Line shot. It's going to drop for a base hit. Meredith on his way to second. The throw will not be in time. A stand-up, one-out double for Kier Meredith. His third hit of the day. Yep, three in a row. And uh, he stayed right with it again. It's curveball against the left-handed pitcher. Good to see. So now James Parker's got a chance to drive him home from scoring position. Parker had an RBI single his last time up. As part of that big Clemson fifth inning. Throw back to try to get Meredith, but he's able to get back in time. Outfield playing Parker straight away and pretty deep. Yep. (laughs) 
called strike one. On the season, Parker batting 375 with runners in scoring position. Takes a cut and misses 0-2. Tyrell, 79 mile an hour on that last pitch. Fouled it off. Towards the stands behind the Clemson dugout. It'll stay 0-2. Reagan Reed is on deck. O2 pitch inside. Hmm. One and two. Close to take, but he made the correct decision. Fly ball, right center field. Diving at the wall is Brooks Coetzee. Coetzee hit the wall hard. He's saying he caught it. Yeah, he made the catch. And Meredith he, gets back. And then he lateraled it to the center fielder who threw it in. You could hear that thud and he is still down. That is Brooks Coetzee. Looks like he's okay, he's talking, he can we're going to get a good look at it. Made the catch. Oh, it just goes in with his right shoulder. Flips it over to Spencer Myers. One of the Notre Dame trainers has reached him out there. And they're checking him out. He's got a smile on his face. He should. That was a terrific play. He paid the price for it. It was, yeah. I always wonder about how this is kind of a different ballpark in the outfield. It doesn't have a traditional warning track. You've got that that hill you're trying to judge. Yeah, it's definitely an advantage for, I mean, every team that comes in, in here will practice with their outfielders hitting the ball. Kier Meredith, meanwhile, he was like us. We wanted to see, did he catch it? Did he not? Yeah, he didn't know what to do. I don't yeah. blame him. And he hustled back. Or at that time of the night, it's hard to see. But Coetzee getting a nice ovation from the Clemson fans. And there's some Notre Dame fans here as well. And he's going to stay in the game, so good for him. Great play. And he will stay in there in right field. More importantly for the Fighting Irish, there's now two outs in the inning. It's up to Reagan Reed. Meredith got back to second, so he's still in scoring position for Reed. He singled in the second, had a sack bunt the last time up. Also walked, so he's been aboard twice. Tyrell trying to keep Clemson within range. His team has come back from 9-2 down to make it 9-6. Here comes the 1-0 pitch. In the dirt, but Lamana stops it 2-0. You know, in college baseball this year, because of the the way the pandemic stopped the season last year and, and 
A lot of guys got basically the do-over. It's interesting to see how high up some of these numbers have gone. I mean, Clemson's got a full roster of guys in the 40s and yeah. stretch halfway through the 50s. Yeah, Notre Dame's got 42 on their roster. They brought 27. Two will pitch gets away. Meredith is on the way to third, and he will get in there. So now he's 90 feet away. Here's a look at Meredith. It's also 3-0. and oh. Yep, Wagner's on deck. He homered his last time up. Call to strike, three and one. Pass ball, by the way, on that play that allowed Meredith to advance. The three one pitch with two out. Single up the middle, it goes off, picked up by Preisner, and Preisner is able to get Reed at first. Great way to end it for the Irish. They keep the Tigers off the board. Six are complete at Clemson. Fighting Irish have fought their way back into it. It's 9-6 Tigers. Top of the seven, Tigers in front of Notre Dame, 9-6. Clemson came oh so close to adding to that lead at the end of the inning. Watch this shot by Reed. It actually went off the ankle of Tyrell, and, and that really saved a run. That had right up the middle written all over it, Tim. Kick save and a beauty. Won't yeah. be a better save by a Notre Dame goalkeeper this weekend in uh, hockey. They play in the Big Ten in hockey, and that was quite a quite a play. Wow. And, of course, here's uh, Kotze, who had the big play defensively the uh, last half inning. Takes that first pitch from Clayton for a strike. Two years ago, Kotze uh, played sparingly. He had just one two-hit game the whole year, but it was at Clemson on March the 16th. He took that shot to this shoulder when he ran into the wall. Was able to hang on the ball. Check swing. It's quickly 0-2. Yeah, he's going to be sore tomorrow. Nick Clayton, the head of the hitter. 0-2 pitch. Just missed it, one and two. Clayton came in and was able to finally end that four-run sixth inning for the Irish with a strikeout. Pitch looked pretty good. As did the 1,280 umpires in the stands, believe. <laughs> Fly ball, center field, Teodosio settles under it. One down. One away, and that's going to bring up Zach Preisner. He's got back-to-back -back doubles. Yeah. And honestly, he could have been three for three. He probably would have reached on an infield hit, except uh, James Parker just made that incredible stop and throw. You might recall back in the second inning. Exactly right. Back when we had daylight. Yeah. Pitch taken for a strike, one and one. Yeah, you play those early afternoon games or late afternoon, early evening games here, the early part of the season, these 4 o'clock starts on a weeknight. Of course, we've got the time change coming up, and Tigers will be playing a little bit later. More like in that 6 o'clock neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Ball and two strikes, one down in the top of the seventh. Big swing and a miss, second strikeout in the two batters he's faced. 
out of the three batters I think he's facing, excuse me. Yeah, Clayton's look sharp here. Two strikeouts sandwiching that fly ball out to Teodosio. So with two down, that brings up Jack Brannigan, the third baseman. He singled the last time up, part of that big sixth inning for the Irish. First pitch taken for a strike. Brannigan was a freshman All-American last year. He also played as a pitcher and a hitter. Liner, base hit. Up the middle with two out. His second straight hit. Yeah. Had a great series at North Carolina last year. He had a game in which he had three hits and five RBIs. Also stole home. And also uh, did a good job on the mound against the Tar Heels. Top of the order. Spencer Myers. He's got a single. Knocked in a run when he grounded out to the first baseman Grice in the sixth. His average at 188. Grounder. Grice will handle it. Takes care of it himself. The side retired. Notre Dame got a base runner on, but they couldn't bring him home. Go to the bottom of the seventh. 9-6 Clemson. Clemson riding some freshman power for the second straight game. Caden Grice, Max Wagner have knocked in more than half of their runs with a couple of home runs. Reagan Reed has done the job as well. Tim, it's almost a very similar story to what we saw here Tuesday night. Yeah, it's a second straight game. Grice and Wagner have hit home runs. Nice combination. One from the left side of the plate, one from the right side of the plate. But uh, once again, the bottom of the order is done pretty well. Yeah, that three-run shot. One of the big hits in that seven-run inning for the Tigers. Struck out twice before that. Tyrell remains the pitcher for the Fighting Irish. And he's quickly in good shape here at 3-0. Rio pitch. Missed it outside. Four pitches, and the Tigers have a runner aboard. Catcher Jonathan French next up. Reached on a walk in the fifth. Advanced on a wild pitch. 0 for 2 on the day. Scored a run. French listed as a freshman. He was out all of last year, suffered a broken leg on February the 7th. 30th round pick of the Indians out of high school. I mean, once they get everybody healthy, I mean, this is good. This is a strong position for Clemson at catcher. Yeah. You think about Hackenberg Absolutely. and obviously we're Thinking about Cooper Engel, yeah, freshman. Cooper Engel hit 360 in the fall. He was one of Clemson's top hitters in the fall workouts. And he is uh, available this weekend. Pitch misses. Not seen him yet today. Tigers have 10 hits on the game as they throw over to first to keep an eye on Wagner. Wagner has one steal and one attempt on the season. Pitch misses low, 2-0. Activity in the Notre Dame bullpen. That's Tanner Kolhep, sophomore. Right-hander getting some throws in there. Terrell has worked 
one and two thirds innings so far. 2 0 pitch. Take it for a strike. Two nice curveball there. Both teams have had a pitcher come out. It's kind of settled things down after the craziness we had in the bottom of the fifth and the top of the sixth. Fly ball. Deep right center field. Back to the wall. It is gone. Home run for Jonathan French. What I said, what did I just say? <laughs> Not so settled down. That is his first career home run. It's a two-run shot, and the Tigers stretch the lead back out to 11 to 6. We got another Tiger who has gone with the pitch nicely. And it cleared it uh, by a good bit. Once again, the bottom third of that Clemson order. Just amazing. Has been terrific. So now the numbers six, seven, eight, and nine in the order have hit home runs. And here's Caden Grice, and he had a two-run bomb the last time he was up in the fifth. French now takes the home run lead of the team with three. That's the first one is hit to the opposite field. Good swing. Takes a big swing and a miss, does Grice. Actually, Grice has three now, too. He had the two in the one game, and he's got one today. This is outside. Get something up. You can hit hard in that gap over there. Yeah, I'll uh, correct myself. At his third home run of the season for French a little bit earlier. The first two he hit in those in that uh, Cincinnati series. Mm -hmm. Check swing. Good eye there with two strikes. Yeah. Two and two. Two relievers now up for Notre Dame. Crisis two for two. He's now lifted his average to 375. Two two pitch. Holds back on it. It's now three and two. James Holbert, senior left hander, is the other reliever up for Notre Dame now. Grice aboard with the walk. Brings up Bryce Teodosio, who got the scoring started in this game with a two-run homer in the third. As you can see, Lamana heading out to talk to Tyrell, and now he's joined by Brannigan and Cavadas. Looks like they're stalling for the bullpen. Here comes the manager. And it looks like another pitching change for Notre Dame is coming. Yep. And Notre Dame will make a change. They'll bring on their fourth pitcher of the game. We will meet the new Fighting Irish pitcher when we come back. Tanner Kolhep, a sophomore from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, is the new pitcher for Notre Dame. And, of course, you get early in the season, and you know the way baseball numbers can be, so his numbers are pretty staggering. Uh, he's 0-1. He took the loss against Wake Forest in the opener of that series. He's 0-1 with one appearance. He's got an ERA of 99. 
99.00. He had no outs and gave up four earned runs. Well, you know, uh, you know, Fred, uh, being an expert in math that I am, he uh, that he uh, actually his ERA is undefined. Undefined. <laughs> his division by zero is undefined. But they put 99 on I the love that number. just so they put something up. Yeah, there. I love that number. So he's hoping to get out of the undefined range. But, yeah, he gave up four earned runs without getting an out against the Deacons. So Teodosio will step in against Cole Hep. Grice is at first after the walk. One zero pitch. There's a shot over the head of the shortstop Prisner. Grice will make the turn at third. They will hold him up there. Teodosio with a stand-up double. And the Tigers have got something going. They are still nobody out. Teodosio, this season is off to a great start. Two more hits today, two for three, a double and a home run. Remember I mentioned they only had three hits all last year. I think it was three for 18. Brings up the top of the order. I mean, Teodosio is one of those guys that he is so good defensively for you at senior, and he's an experienced player. When you get offense of him, it's, it's just even more of a bonus. But, Absolutely. man, to see him really picking it up now, that's tremendous for Clemson. Anderson with a sharp foul ball that went off the netting and sent Dylan Brewer kind of running away from the on-deck circle. Runners at second and third. Tigers already have two runs in on a Jonathan French home run. Notre Dame can't afford to give up any more runs, so they got the infield in. Which, as they say, makes a 200 hitter, a 300 hitter, and a 300 hitter, a 400 hitter. <laughs> Fly ball, right field. Coatsy giving chase for it, but it's going to go into the Clemson bullpen. Another Notre Dame reliever, that's James Holbert. He'll taking some warm up tosses. Ball and two strikes is the count to Elijah Henderson. Took a cut and missed. He strikes out. First out of the inning. So Dylan Brewer gets a chance to perhaps bring a couple of runners home as he comes up with one down. He's got one run already knocked in today. RBI single in the fifth. Scored a run. Big swing and a miss. Yeah, a home run cut there. Yep. Cole have clocked at 95 mile an hour on that last pitch. Brewer was a four-time All-State selection out of Atlanta, South Carolina. Hey. Foul tipped it, 2-0. Oh. oh, and two, excuse me. 32nd round draft choice of the San Francisco Giants. O2 pitch.
There it is. Take a swing and a miss, and there's two away. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Cole Hepp. Yeah, after giving up that double. Now we've got Kier Meredith coming up. He's gotten three straight hits. He's going to get to face a right-handed batter. So you got to like this situation for Clemson. They've added a couple of runs. They've stretched the lead back out to five. But we've seen each team, Clemson's got a seven spot on the board, and the Fighting Irish have a four spot, so. Fly ball left side is going to be out of play as Brannigan chases after it. Well out of play. Again, Meredith just made his season debut on Tuesday night and off and rolling 571 his average right now. Four for seven on the season. Pitch from Cole Hepp. This is outside, one and one. Fouled it again, one and two. Cole Hep, another 95 mile an hour pitch. James Parker is on deck. Grice at third, Teodosio at second. Another foul ball. One ball, two strikes. Meredith ground ball foul down the right side. One thing that caught my eye looking ahead in this series on Sunday, Tim Carter Raffield, who started for Clemson on Tuesday night against ETSU, is set to take the start. Now he only pitched four innings against the Bucks. Yeah, he was impressive. I think he had eight strikeouts, if I recall. Eight strikeouts. Gave up one earned run, only a couple of hits in four innings. The one-two pitch to Meredith. Once again, just battling in there. Look at Kier out of third season in the program out of Winston-Salem. The pitch. Shot, right side, base hit. One run will score. Here comes Teodosio standing up. Put two more on the board for Clemson. It's 13-6. Meredith is just having himself a week. Yes, he is. Four hit game. And again, boy, that was a great at bat. Just fouled off pitch after pitch. And hit it right in the hole perfectly. So the Tigers take their second seven-run lead in this game. And it looks like we're going to have one of the 
a change in right field. As you can see, Coetzee finally coming out of the game. Of course, he hit his shoulder against the wall, yeah. making a catch, but now he's come out again. And Ryan Cole, a senior, is the new right fielder for the Fighting Irish. Didn't pick up. I was watching the plays at the plate. Yeah, I didn't on it, so I don't know if he had trouble throwing or what. Yeah. Or seemed to be limping just a little bit. I don't know, maybe kind of pulled something. As Meredith is running with two out, the throw is in there by Lamana, and that will end the inning. But the Tigers get four runs, and they get two of them from a home run by Jonathan French. Seven complete at Clemson. The Tigers up 13-6. Clemson leading Notre Dame. Top of the eighth inning at Doug Kingsmore Stadium on a now Friday night. Let's give you a look at how the inning ended, the bottom of the seventh. It was Kier Meredith gets caught stealing. It looked like the throw was there in time, Tim, but I think he went for his body and his hand might have gotten in there, although he was called out. Yeah. Yeah. You see that call common it's almost like the umpire figured well the ball beat him there (laughs) (laughs) good enough (laughs) good enough for me fighting irish now with carter putts leading things off he's reached all four times today a couple of singles followed by a couple of walks as nick clayton continues on in relief for the tigers pitches inside clayton is the third pitcher of the day for clemson Pitching an inning and a third. He's got a couple of strikeouts. He's given up one hit. Yeah, this is six batteries faced. He's done a good job like he did the other day against DTSU. Big swing and a miss. Two and one the count. The Tigers are up by seven right now, but this is, has been an interesting series between the two teams. And the, the road team has done pretty well. The, two, the games at Clemson are tied 5-5, and Clemson has a 7-3 advantage in the games at Notre Dame. Pitch inside, misses 3-1. and one. The first time these two teams met was in 1994, and it was in an NCAA tournament game. Here, Clemson was ranked number one in the nation and had won the first game, and Notre Dame upset the Tigers right here at Kingsmore Stadium, 8-1. to one. There you go. Pitch misses. Pat Murphy was the coach at uh, Notre Dame at the time. He later went on to Arizona State. Last time up for the Irish, Jared Miller. A two-run shot. Part of that big comeback inning for... The Fighting Irish, as they climbed their be- way back into the game, they were trailing 9-2, to two, got it back to 9-6, to six, only to see the Tigers respond with four in the last half inning. Yeah, he came into this game, Notre Dame's leading hitter at 538. One for three today with a walk. He walked with the bases loaded to drive in a run and then had that three-run homer. Putts, by the way, has now reached all five times at the plate today, the last three times by walks. Go along with a couple of hits. I mentioned that game in 1994. Jack Leggett was the Clemson head coach, and today is his birthday. Happy birthday to Jack. Happy birthday to Jack Leggett. Great guy. What a career here. A great career at Western Carolina, too, before Absolutely. That. Absolutely. Took them to... NCAA tournament, I think, five years in a row from 85 to 89. Yeah, he was on the NCAA baseball committee, you know, when he was the head coach. That's kind of unusual. It shows the level of respect people had for him. Two balls and no strikes. The count to Miller. Clayton misses outside. It's now 3-0. 
trouble when you pitch around Miller. Then you got Gavadas on deck, who's really Notre Dame's best home run hitter. Here comes the 3 0. <laughs> Called strike. You can see that Miller was re made, ready to make his way down to first. He got a not so fast on that. My ball out of play. Back behind us. Miller likes playing in this ball carp. Two years ago on March the 15th, he had three RBIs in a game against Clemson, and today he's got four. Started all 54 games for Notre Dame in 2019. Full count. Nobody out here in the top of the eighth. Ground ball, but it's going to go foul. Miller and company trying to climb back into this one. Clayton finally ready. Here's his pitch. Ground ball, once again out of play. Right side. As we mentioned a little bit earlier, that you got to uh, the pleasure of calling two Notre Dame Clemson football games this year. And I know you had a special trip up to South Bend. Yeah, we yeah, certainly did. Got to. Uh, Take Coach Sweeney around campus after the Friday uh, workout. That was that was a special time. Fouled it off to the left side. I mean, he he wanted almost like a sightseeing trip. Yeah, no, I took him to the grotto. I took him to the church. I took him. Uh, we took him by the library. We uh, he he had never been to Notre Dame and he'd heard so much about it and wanted to see it. So, did he meet any celebrities when he was there? Uh, Digger Phelps, does he count? He counts. <laughs> That's who I was driving Digger at. Digger presented him with a painting, one of a Digger Phelps original painting. Wow. Oh, yeah. Base smash. hit's going to drop in. Runner goes head first into third. Putz is in at third base now, so you got runners at the corner and nobody out. And a trip to the mound coming for Clemson. Miller looked at trying to stretch it into a double, but then held up. But uh, credit Carter Putz, who was on the move and dove in head first, and the Tigers are going to make a pitching change. Here comes the fourth pitcher of the day for the Tigers. You'll meet him when we come back. New pitcher for the Tigers, the left-hander Jeffrey Gilbert. Second year in the program at a Charleston Bishop England High School, and we saw him on Tuesday night. Yeah, and he was pretty impressive. He faced three players and struck them all out. Uh, so we'll see if he can duplicate that feat. You know, we talked about Davis Sharp coming into the game today with 19 strikeouts and two walks. Gilbert has 13 strikeouts and just one walk. Yeah. In five and a third inning of work. Got a tough batter, batter to deal with here at Nico Cavadas, who's up with runners at the corner and nobody out. There's a long fly ball. It's going to force Brewer back to the wall. He holds up and will bring it in. That's going to bring one run home, so the sack fly gets a run on the board, but it's pretty scary when you got a home run hitter like that who takes it that far deep, Tim. Boy, and that was way up in the air, and as we look out at the flag, it's kind of blowing out right now. I was really thinking that was going to leave the yard, but second sacrifice of the uh, fly of the game. He's uh, 
been to the plate five times, but has only one official at bat. He's got two walks, two sacrifice flies. Got a pinch hitter now up for the Fighting Irish. Number 18, Nick Juary. He's a redshirt freshman out of Farmington, Minnesota. He wanted to go to a warm weather climate. Uh, <laughs> That's why I went to Notre Dame. This is his second at bat of the season. He's 0 for 1 so far. My ball off, off to the right side, and it's now 2 and 1. Got a runner at first. One out, top of the eighth. One run is in for the Fighting Irish, but Clemson still leads 13-7. Another foul ball back behind us, and now it's two and two. For the fun of it, I just called up current temperature in Farmington, Minnesota. It's it's 35. It's That's 35 pretty balmy degrees. for there. It's not bad. Yeah. Going to go down to 23 tonight. Ooh. Strike out. Gilbert gets the second out of the inning. Makes it a 14 to one ratio for Mr. Gilbert on the season. So with two away, brings up Alex Brat. Braid, excuse me. He struck out, came in. Replacing the left fielder, Jack Ziska. It's a first pitch for a called strike 0 and 1. Miller's single a little bit earlier gets the Fighting Irish to 10 hits. So both teams in double figures. Clemson has 13. Round ball, handled by Parker. Parker the throw, Rice gets him, inning done. Fighting Irish get a run. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's 13-7 Clemson. Notre Dame got a run to the top of the eighth inning, but they've got a lot of catching up to do. 13-7 Clemson as we head to the bottom half of the inning. Nick Juary will stay in as the catcher for Notre Dame. Tigers leading things off with James Parker. Parker basically got robbed by Coatsy, you might remember, back in the sixth, his last time up, he hit that drive to the near the fence, and Coatsy caught it, took his elbow into the wall at the same time, got a little shaken up, but stayed in the game. He's got an RBI single as part of his day, batting at 4.07 now. First pitch taken for a strike. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. Base hit up the middle. Leadoff man is aboard for the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth. Tigers have scored 13 runs in this game. It's the most they've scored in a game since the 2019 season. May the 14th defeated Coastal Carolina 14-3. So stretch of 31 games. Most runs scored in 31 games. Reagan Ree now is up. He's got a hit today. Also has a walk, so he's reached twice. Pitch taken for a ball, 1-0. Oh. 
Parker 0 for 1 on the season, stolen base category. Pitch was inside. Did it hit him? He thinks it did. Umpire disagrees. 2 and 0. Close, but uh, I don't doesn't look think like so the, from that angle. If the if it hit him, the ball would have moved the other direction. I think. Yeah. He got a breeze out of the pitch, slight breeze, but <laughs> at the very least, it's three and zero. He might get on a walk anyway. Yeah. Same difference. And didn't have to take any punishment for it. No. So now the first two Tigers are aboard. Pump is going to send. Here comes Max Wagner. Of course, Max has got one of the big shots of the day, a three-run homer. Part of that seven-run fifth. Yeah, if you just joined us, the Tigers have four home runs today. One by the sixth batter in the order, the seventh batter in the order, the eighth batter, and the ninth. It's Wagner, French, Kreis, and Teodosio. Another meeting at the mound. Colehead looked pretty good in that first inning work. Got a couple of strikeouts, but struggling a little bit here in the eighth inning. Plumtonari with two aboard and nobody out. Wagner has reached twice, that three-run homer, and walked the last time up in the seventh, which turned out to be big because he was aboard when Jonathan French hit that home run and gave the Tigers their first two runs of that inning. Strike calling on the inside. Nice breaking ball there. Top. Wagner at 286. Wow. All right. You know, we've been <laughs> marveling at his, you know, his velocity, but these last two pitches have just been nasty. Wow. Step in the bucket. Breaking balls. We've seen him hit 94 and 95, but here he is without the heat up 0 and 2. And the dirt low. Trying to get him to chase it. Wagner held up. Parker at second, Reed at first. Pitches outside, so things have evened up now at two and two. Third strike, first out of the inning. It's four straight curveballs. See where that one came in. Oh, that was inside. So here comes Jonathan French. His last time up, hit that two run bomb. His third of the season to go along with nine RBI. Pretty good RBI total for this time of the year. That's five straight curves. Four of them have been strikes. 
Also got a board with a walk. Time is called. Now comes the 0-1. Takes that one for a ball, evens it up, one and one. He's throwing nothing but curve balls to these right-hand hitters. Mr. Grice on deck. As a lefty against it, it's a little bit easier to see. Got the strike called, one and two. Well, I expect to see the old curveball start out at his head. And One-two pitch. Got him and swing and missed. Second straight strikeout. And there's two away. Grice, the first baseman, comes up. A couple of hits today, including that big two-run homer, his third of the season. And now another trip to the mound coming. Yeah, they got to bring in another pitcher to face Grice. Yeah, they're saying Grice, he's, he's got three home runs on the week. So another pitching change for Notre Dame. You'll meet the new Fighting Irish pitcher when we come back. The new pitcher for Notre Dame is a left-hander, a graduate student, Cameron Brown. He's a, out of Lakewood, Colorado. Comes in for uh, Cole Epp, who faced eight batters, went one and two-thirds innings, gave up three hits, one run, a walk, and four strikeouts. No errors yet on the season for Notre Dame. That's, that's the all the runs are earned. By the way, we've, of course, this is the first of three games between these two teams. You'll see them all right here on ACC Network Extra. Game two starts tomorrow at 3. The Sunday's wrap-up game will be a 1 o'clock and also be here 5 o'clock Sunday afternoon to see the number one Clemson men's soccer team host Syracuse. So Caden Grice... Faces Cameron Brown with okay. two out and two aboard here in the bottom of the eighth inning. 13-7, Clemson on top of the Fighting Irish. First pitch is high. Pitcher for uh, Notre Dame tomorrow is scheduled to be John Michael Bertrand, uh, who pitched for Furman. And uh, when they dropped their program, he went to Notre Dame as a transfer. The pitch. Right, Call for now. a strike. Let's go, Grice. Let's go, baby. Grice has got a single, two walks, and a home run. Knocked in two. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. And he'll step off for a moment. Of course, Clemson has a transfer from Furman. Rob Hughes, right, right-hander out of Rock Hill. Paladins ending their baseball program. It's a shame that's the first game in Clemson history was against Furman in 1896. 
Strike called, one and two. You're trying to tell me they played a baseball game without you or Bob Bradley in attendance? That's correct. That year of the baseball SID was in 1896. <laughs> One ball, two strikes with two out. Pitch way outside, two and two. Yeah, speaking of the old days, there was a common denominator between these two programs from way back. A guy named Frank Shaughnessy played baseball and football from Notre Dame through 1904, and then three years later became the Clemson baseball coach and football coach. Quite a combo. He had a fascinating career. He uh, he was from Canada. In 1915, he was the manager of the Ottawa team and actually was the manager of a team that played in the, so the Stanley Cup. Found <laughs> out of play. <laughs> Then he actually, before then, in 1907 and 1908, he played in the major leagues for Connie Mack in the Philadelphia Phillies, was once involved in a trade for Frank Home Run Baker. Then uh, later in his career became the commissioner of the International League. Strike three called. And that'll end the inning. Tigers got their first two batters aboard, but left them on the bases. We go to the ninth. Clemson leads Notre Dame. It's 13-7. Seven, eight, and nine hitters up for Notre Dame here in the top of the ninth inning. Clemson leading the Fighting Irish 13-7 in game one of this three-game weekend series with Jeffrey Gilbert still on the mound for the Tigers. And before we see the first pitch, we have to finish up, of course, the legend of Frank Shaughnessy. Two more notes on Frank. One for you Notre Dame people watching. If, if you look in the Notre Dame press guide under the longest plays, he has the longest play in Notre Dame football history. He went 107 yards with a midair fumble return against Kansas. Yes, 107 yards back in those days. The field was 110 yards long. I bet you didn't know that. And then at the uh, later in his career, 1947, he had been a minor league manager in the Dodgers organization and became real close friends with Branch Rickey. And so when he, be, he became the commissioner of the International League, uh, Branch Rickey worked at the Jackie Robinson would play in the Montreal uh, affiliate for the Dodgers because they knew uh, that Frank Shaughnessy would uh, take good care of him and watch out uh, over him. And so that's one of the reasons why Jackie Robinson started his career in Montreal. How's that for a career? That is for a career. And once again, if you're a Clemson fan, you know that Tim told you all that without a single note. <laughs> Ryan Cole, one, two count. Can't get the call there for Gilbert. It makes it two and two. You know we call you with great affection and great respect, Clemson Google. Well, thank you. Actually, Tuesday I'm doing the game with the fellow who gave me that nickname, Dan Scott. Base hit to the left side, so the leadoff man aboard. For the Tigers, it'll be the USC Upstate. USC game. Upstate, yes. I'll be on basketball tomorrow with Don Munson against the Pitt Panthers as the Tigers try to close out the regular season with a 16 and 6 record and 10 and 6 in the ACC. Quite a season. Yeah, a lot's been going on across the street from us. Zach Preisner. Reiser's had a good day. Got a couple of hits, a couple of runs. His two hits are both doubles. Mm -hmm. Swing and a miss. Fouled it off.
A lot of runs on the board, obviously. Notre Dame has left 11 men on base in the game to seven for Clemson. Cole, the leadoff man at first, still up board. Ball and a strike. The pitch from Gilbert. Fly ball, left field. Calling for it is Kier Meredith. Makes the play, first out of the inning. That was up the elevator shaft. Yeah, Notre Dame left 24 players on base in their uh, Wake Forest series, which was eight per game. As you said, 11 today. Pinch hitter now for the Irish. Brock Murtha, he's a freshman out of Sayville, New York. This is his first appearance at the plate on the season. He's got one previous game play, but this is his first trip officially to the plate. 2-0 is the count. The pitch from Gilbert. Big cut, nest two and one. Top of the order coming up for the Irish. Pitch taken for a ball, three and one. Here comes the three one. Fouled back, that'll make it a full count. Eighty eight mile an hour fastball in that one. Here comes the three two pitch. Taken for a strike, and there's two away. So he's faced five batters, struck out two. Means in two appearances, he's faced eight and struck out five. So it's the last chance for the Fighting Irish. Runner aboard for Spencer Myers, the leadoff man. That's in his last two appearances. He's actually got 15 strikeouts for the year. Squared up to bunt. Takes a called strike, 0 and 1. Ryan Cole, the leadoff man, got aboard, but then back to back outs, a fly ball out and a strikeout. Big cut and a miss, 0 and 2. So the Clemson fans getting on their feet, trying to see if they can end this one right here. Check swing, they look down, he goes around, and this one belongs to the Clemson Tigers as Jeffrey Gilbert comes on and shuts the door and the Tigers knock off Notre Dame in game one of this series, 13 to seven, the final. Clemson now moves to 5-2 and two on the season. They're 1-0 in the league, and Notre Dame now 2-2, two and two, and they are even on the season, all in ACC play. Once again, Tim, it was the, today was the bottom four spots in the order that were big for the Tigers. Amazing. The number six, seven, eight, and nine batters in the order all hit home runs. I don't know that I've ever seen that. Knocked in at least nine of their 13 runs. So for Tim Beret, I'm Fred Cunningham saying so long. 
from Doug Kingsmore Stadium. The final score, Clemson 13, Notre Dame 7. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Have a great night, everyone.